So basically, I was going to jail like every week or every other week, you know, and uh, I had like I had 10 felonies. Holy and, shit. A uh, hundred and forty misdemeanors. So you go home. So what was the moment? Because I'm so curious about this. What was the moment you realized, fuck, I'm literally sleeping on the streets? Like, do you have a, a moment in time where you realize that? Okay, I know exactly what moment I was so embarrassed. Velotti, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, man. And, uh, yeah, just make sure that mic, though, just because, yeah, right, right about there. Okay. It's a little, it's a learning curve. Yeah. 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 It's but, not my uh, first time doing something like this. Yeah, it's for A. I appreciate I, you having me on your show. Yeah, man. I get it. They got the lights. You got the cat. You know, it's a lot to take in. It I is. understand. It and, is. Uh, so we're gonna get right into it. Uh, Velotti, you were you were homeless for some years. Yeah. How like how how long? Um, 2008 to 2017. Jesus Christ! So borderline 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years. Well, I just want to say this is a lot better than being homeless. I mean, we're living the life right now. <laughs> yeah, we are. So, but you've been off the streets for like five years now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... A little more than five years, actually. Almost six. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you... I'm going to go ahead and tell the, the people here. Uh, this story is incredible. So, Velotti, back in the days, uh, 2000... I'd say two to 2000... 5 2006 uh Velotti here was uh, uh basically professional skateboarder i mean everybody you were a local like legend you really were i appreciate it and you knew this um he was on every montage all the videos and we all knew we were like Velotti's going pro and so all of a sudden he just dropped out of nowhere and that's where he dropped off he went fucking homeless no one knew where i was yeah. They didn't know where I was. Yeah. You yeah. didn't even know where the fuck you were. Exactly. <laughs> and, and just to t tap into it, just so you know, uh, I, I experienced a little bit of homelessness myself. I lived in my car for about two months. Nowhere near, you know, what, what you've been through. But my dad went homeless for a year. So I have this empathy and I also have this understanding that he, it's almost a choice. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong because I noticed right when I just cut the bullshit and was doing the right things, all of that went out of the window. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I didn't have any help, but, you know, for somebody who was about to be a professional skateboarder, and you were top tier, too. You were really, I mean, I'm going to play some clips. I mean, he was jumping down 15 stairs, fucking just uh, next level shit. I mean, a lot of handicapped people can't even walk down the stuff he was jumping over. So, not to make a joke about that, but it's the truth. You know, because I've always, I've never jumped any down anything that big. Is you went homeless for 10 fucking years. And uh, let's just dive into this. Actually, before we dive into it, how many times have you been fucking arrested? Because we used to do this thing where we would check up on you every once in a while on the booking blotter. Mm -hmm. Just to see how many times you've been arrested in the last six months. Not we, It wasn't to make fun. We just couldn't believe how many times someone could get arrested and I know in the homeless world, you get a, it's very easy to get arrested for nothing. You could literally just be sitting out front of a gas station and get arrested. Because it happened to my dad. So, if you don't mind me asking, how many times? It, I, okay, so basically I was going to jail like every week or every other week, you know. And uh, I had like, I had 10 felonies. Holy and, shit. Uh, 140 misdemeanors. But there was, the reason why there's so many is because... In one incarceration, I could have seven misdemeanors. Okay, you know yeah. I mean? So, so over the period of ten years, this is what's holding up my license. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm working on it right now. I'm working on a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, you, you know? it sounds like a sounds like a lot. <laughs> Overall, uh, you know, I was an extremist, and the 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 love that I found in skateboarding and that whole you know like rush of like oh I'm scared of this trick and you overcome the fear and you oh, land it dude. needed to be replaced with something, and I found that in you know drugs and alcohol. I mean, I really found it there, where it was actually better to me than skateboarding. That's why I ended up quitting. But now, once I turned my life around in 2017, I needed to uh, find out what I was going to do with my life where I could get that same kind of feeling, but I'm not in addiction. And um, it's more than just skateboarding. I had to do something where it was a little more than just skateboarding. No, you know? I, get, I, get, I get what you're saying. 
the alcohol thing I have, weed was whatever. I don't even smoke weed anymore. But weed definitely, you know, it's corny, but it's a gateway, it's a gateway drug. Like, it really is. Like, yeah. It, it really fucking is. Because once you start smoking weed, you realize this ain't shit. And, you know. And it, move you on go, to you the, go to the, you move go the, on next to the one. better stuff, it, man. It, Come on. There you go. <laughs> move on <laughs> to the better shit. But, um, well, my encounter with alcohol was only twice, but it was very shortly lived. Uh, my, mom, my mom died about three years ago. And mm. I held it in for a while, but eventually I just snapped. And I was closet drinking, where it was basically I wasn't sleeping, smoking weed all day, and drinking from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. But here's something that I could also you could probably attest to is there's sloppy drunk and then there's also destructive drunk. Mm-hmm. I was destructive drunk. So I woke up one day, and this is why I don't drink a lot. Um, one, my mother had a problem with it. She died from that to begin with. But I woke up one day. I had fucking neck tattoos, a 1985 Cadillac, and an ex-girlfriend in my bed with no recollection. <laughs> That was the moment I realized, okay, there's this is going on on a mass scale. Because if Jack, the guy who could keep his shit together, is going through this, now I, I truly understand how people could fall into a dark, dark hole, end up homeless, sleeping behind a Walmart or whatever the fuck. Probably mm-hmm. Walmart probably isn't the best place. But... You get my point. Yeah. So I feel that on that level, but it's not, you said you're an extremist, so you fucking went homeless for nine years. And uh, so, but okay, what was, so basically you've been arrested 150 uh, oh, times. Uh, no, I know exactly how many how times. Many? It's a little more than 80. Damn. Yeah. Over Less 80. than 90, more than 80. I've been arrested three times. And that yeah. was enough for Jack. Because I've been through a felony, dude. It cost a lot of money. To get a felony you know, off when, your record. When people, oh when people get arrested and then they go home, they're like, I'm never coming back here. And like I was saying that the first 10 times. Not the last. But then, <laughs> then at the end, no, nah, I wasn't saying that you no more. Look, I was like, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you probably look forward to it. Yeah, bull? No, I, oh, I didn't really like jail. Okay, I, I really so. didn't like it, to be honest. You yeah. know what I mean? But I just knew I was coming back. Oh you know, Because God. I knew I wasn't going to change. I knew I wasn't going to change. You know what I mean? I didn't want to change. I wanted to stay exactly how I was. I didn't want anyone bothering me. I didn't want anyone... Um, Blowing my high, you get what I mean. Like I wanted, I wanted to just stay. What's high. that? What's that song? Uh, he goes, uh, "You make my high come down. You make my high come down." Uh, Nate Dog. Yeah, I didn't want is. anyone, you know, ruining, you know, telling me to stop or anything. I wanted to be left alone. I was straight up like the last couple years of my addiction. I was curing depression, bro. That's all I was doing. It and, wasn't even fun no more. And know? when you and when you drink, because that's what's happened to me. I did this with weed too. So there's that whole party lifestyle, right? And I've come to a conclusion in my life, because I'm 33. I think you're a year older than me, right? I'm 34. Okay, yeah. so I've come to a conclusion in my life in the last two years. The reason why I would party so much whenever I fell into that rut was it's easy to go out and drink and be the man for six hours, and nothing fucking matters. And you're just blitzkrieg bopped, addicted to the shindig, just fucking woo, just going. Right? It's like that one song, I'll be feeling like the man when I walk through. But yeah, but when you wake up in the morning, all that shit you were trying to feel, forget about, mm-hmm. it's still there. It's right there in your fucking face. It ends up being the actual complete opposite the next morning. <laughs> exactly. You, you go, I'm not the man. I'm not doing anything with my life. I'm a loser. And to backtrack a little bit, just because I'm sure people are interested, what kind of, besides the alcohol, because that's the worst in my opinion. Alcohol, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Alcohol is the silent but deadly motherfucker. Yes. But what was uh, some of the other drugs? Just because I'm curious. I have a cousin who suffered with heroin and, and, and stuff like that. My dad suffered with narcotics. He's overdosed nine times. He's still mm. alive. Can't believe it. Um, I've overdosed a couple times, you know. Not, that's scary not that many, shit. But I usually, you know. What was your drug of choice besides the alcohol, though? Like, what were you fucking with? I know exactly. I know exactly what I was fucking with. Lay it on four, us, big daddy. It's the four drugs that are just a per, like it, a perfect mix for when well, you know if you're lay it into on that. Em. Alcohol, Xanax, crack, and heroin. 
those are the, the uh the those the, are the, fi- the they're official the, the 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 real four devils yep there's a thing where they say like and, and from my experience i know they say i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired you know and it sounds cliche but it's true my take on it the real answer is it doesn't care if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's how strong it is. You know, There's it that. does not care. It's like a step above sick and tired of being sick and tired is right here. It doesn't care if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's a whole nother level. And understanding that like part of your DNA, like you understand that. Yeah. That's when you start to get better. I totally agree. Cause my dad used to say this all the time. <laughs> I can't feel your feelings. And that might sound a little cold blooded, but it's fucking true. Yeah. And, you, you know, I could see somebody on the corner or I could see somebody who I could see it right on their face. They are not they are going through something mm-hmm. and I could empathize with them. But it's so true. I can't feel your fucking feelings. Mm-hmm. Just like you're not worried about mine. It's, it's just, so you go home. So what was the moment? Because I'm so curious about this. What was the moment you realized? Fuck, I'm literally sleeping on the streets like. Do you have a, a moment in time where you realize that maybe you woke up outside of a Seven Eleven or you woke up behind a hedge or something? Okay, I know exactly what moment I was so embarrassed. There was this uh, skater. His name was Matt, right? And uh, he lived in Wellington. And I oh, are you talking funk- about Hold Matt? On. Oh, sorry. Yeah, his name was Matt, <laughs> and. You know, uh, it was just really embarrassing because he used to film me. You know, we used to, you know, meet up and go street skate and stuff. And uh, I was just casually sleeping at the 7-Eleven, you know, and he became a cop, right? And so he became he, a fucking cop. Yeah, he became a Good Palm Springs cop. Good you know? for him. And uh, he ended up arresting me, bro. He ended up taking me to jail, you know, and he it's fucking just, arrested you. Yeah, anyway, that's not the to. point. He that's had not, to. I get it. You know what I, I mean? Because I was trespassing. I was at that same 7-Eleven. But it was the moment where, like, all right, I thought, like, none of my skater friends really knew or whatever. You know, like, maybe they did. But the point was that I got really embarrassed. Like, that's when it really hit me. Like, that's when I need sunk to do in. something about it. When my skateboard friend that filmed me years ago had to arrest me because <laughs> it was protocol, you know, and he got his life together. I mean, a dude is a cop, you know, it's not easy to be a cop. Oh, he was and, wilding out back in the days too. Yeah. Dude, when he arrested me, I just felt very like I need to figure something out. And it was only three years after that arrest that I, you know, flipped my life around, you know, now it's flipped. This is what it looks like to flip your life around. Oh, you, know? d- d- you guys, I'm going to put your at name on the screen, but or you could click on it below, whatever platform this is on, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, fucking Rumble in the Jungle, whatever. All of them. Yeah, whatever. It's a fucking... We're on all I'm of them. I'm even thinking about putting on Craigslist because I'm getting to the point where I don't even know what to do anymore. Oh. Yeah, that's an outside-of-the-box thing, though. You know what I mean? I yeah. like to think beyond. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <clears throat> that's where I met my girlfriend, this Craigslist. Oh, really? Yeah, she was oh. teaching uh, interpretive dance. Oh, nice. And I saw the profile picture, and I said... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. No, I'm just kidding. Some I'm things not, you just can't resist. I'm just know? joking. I didn't meet her on Craigslist, but but dude, when I heard you were back skating again, and I saw you on Instagram, I said, dude, that these aren't old. This is not old footage. I go, holy shit, because dude, I've I've run into you several times on the streets. Mm-hmm. I've literally given you money. Mm-hmm. Literally. Yo, how long? Boom. How long were you f- sober before you started getting back years. on the board? Three years sober when I got opened up Instagram. Yeah. One year sober when I started skating again. Okay, we okay. We need to backtrack a little bit because I forgot to close this out. So you're homeless for ten years, mm-hmm. arrested eighty times. Yes. Seventy five mis one hundred and forty misdemeanors, which is b- bananas, by the way. Salute. Yeah. But to bounce back from all of that, so how did you get off the streets? Like, what was the uh, uh, was your parents involved? What is the Oh, so that they know, because this is important. Anybody on the street, because people on the streets right now have phones. They can watch this. So if you could tell anybody, uh, give them any advice, and you could say your story, but also think about somebody who might need this information right now. No, I, I already know exactly how this went down. So uh, I was I was at the I was at the uh, Publix on Summit Boulevard. I think you know which one. Yeah, 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 West Point. And I was just panhandling, and I ran into this guy that was like, "Hey, I've been watching you. I've been seeing you." homeless out here for a while he's like i can help you get a place but you have to be sober and i was like oh that's a deal breaker you know what i mean i can't be sober i can't yeah i I really didn't care so 
after that, I told him, I was like, you know what? I'll make a deal with you. Next time I get a felony, I'll, uh, you know, follow through with it. And I got arrested a few times after I saw him for misdemeanors. Yeah. Right. And there was only like 15 days, 20 days in jail. It wasn't really quite enough time to separate me from the lifestyle. Right? Yeah. Cause that 20 days you could still, you, you get out and you just right back to it. Ripping yeah. Them on. Yeah. But on that last felony that I got, I, 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 I did four and a half months and somehow he had my, my mom had his number and I reached out to him and I said, I'm ready for the program. And boom, once I got out, I went straight to the program and I've been there since. So you, had some angel just come into your fucking life yep okay now let's say somebody doesn't have that angel what kind of program should they be looking for to where the kind of deal you got with the housing and the whole nine and what are you gonna have to and like he said he doesn't have to repeat this shit if you if you said this earlier if you don't want it mm-hmm. no one no one's gonna want it for you they might want to help you but if you don't want to fucking get helped it's never going to work. You said that earlier in the car. Yeah, it's you, actually it's, non-profit. It's like non... <laughs> so what would they non- look up, do you think, to find this kind of place? Just non local non-profit, like uh, swag, re- you know what I mean? They have like non-profit people that okay. really look out. But so here's local the thing, non-profit rehab or local non-profit... Facilities. They no- got non-profit facilities. Right? But what so, kind of facility is this? Because I've never been housing. through this. It's just it's local. Non-profit local ha- housing, but for sober, to get sober though. Basically to yeah, get well, off. Yeah, well you have the- to, you have to be sober to go in. So like, you know, like they might hear about you when you're not sober and yeah. then they put you on like a, you know, a, like a list, yeah. right? And then once your name gets called and you give them that phone number, you better be ready, right? And if you're not ready... You're, then you, you need to wait until the next time something like you gotta that catch happens. the next boat. So yeah, they're just nonprofit. You know, that's they're they're really the best because they don't want anything from you. They just want to make sure that you get this the services. Just, but here's the thing: where a lot of people fail because that it's an evolving door, revolving door, is the fact that if you don't want to change, it's not gonna happen. You gotta want to change. It's and not. with me, like. I wanted to change more than anything, you know, or, or like other people say, you know, you submit yourself to be changed rather than change. You know what I mean? Like you just give your whole self up. Like yeah. you're done. Is, uh, I learned in my journey in recovery is that if someone's out there drinking, you know, or, or smoking or, or doing whatever, it is not my job to like ruin their high. You know what no. I mean? I am, I just know for me, I can't do it because I know what happens. You know, like I know where I end up and how I can't control it. So that's why I don't do it. But for someone who thinks that they can control it, they're having fun. I am not there to go try to cram recovery to them while they're smoking or drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't do that. That is not. You're hitting a joint and you're just going, you know, man, being sober is the way. You that is do the not steps. the way to go. You just let you them want, do their thing. You want to do the steps. You come on down. The Papa, bottom. Papa V will take care of you. The bottom. You know what? They have to hit their own bottom. And it's crazy. That's the it's, truth. That's I the mean, truth. Some people don't ever hit it. You got to. You you know, and I was almost that guy. You got to. You could have been there. Guy. You could have just stayed on the streets forever. Now I've had five and a half years to Off think about block. it. <sighs> So being like I had hit a bottom. Do you ever, right? have, do you ever have nightmares about that? Keep no, going, my bad. no, I'm good. Okay. I, I have hit the bottom five and a half years ago. And then now I've had five and a half, five and a half years to think about that. I actually hit a bottom that I wasn't too late. The guy where it was too late. Oh, dude, sometimes it's too late. For instance, my dad, he hit an all time bottom and he hit it late in life in the mm-hmm. 60s. If he didn't have me, he'd be on the streets. Mm hmm. His own sister wants nothing to do with him. Another reason why people don't remain sober is because while they're sober, they don't like it. You understand? They don't like they don't like being sober, and they don't last long because their feelings. You got to look yourself get in the fu- to them. Yeah, you got to look right? yourself in the mirror. And I needed to avoid that, right? Because I've had five and a half years of dealing with my feelings, not turning to any exits. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And I do know. Exit what you mean. is, you know, parting. That's an exit. It is. And, and I've dealt with the feelings, so I'm very well aware of me, what what you know, what triggers me and all that stuff. I'm aware of it, so now um, it's easier to get through life. Oh, know, yeah. I travel through life lighter. Dude, I'm really stoked you came on, and uh, I can't believe you got arrested that many times. But uh, I fucking commend you. So, uh, one, yeah, let me say one no, more. No, keep going, keep going. So We're I chilling. thought, like, Let me check right, the video real quick. I thought, like, all right, I could... I thought like, all right, I could get off 
the uh, alcohol and the drugs, but I definitely didn't think that I would not be arrested. You know, that was the thing that was seen like it was harder. But once I got, once I tackled the first problem, the alcohol and the drugs, then I saw, oh my God, there's no reason for me to do anything illegal. Holy shit. Ever. But at the time before I was sober, I thought like, yeah, maybe I could willfully, you know, willfully put the alcohol and the drugs down. But there's no way I won't commit a misdemeanor. I mean, there's just no way, you know. There's no way I won't commit a misdemeanor. That sounded almost impossible, dude, you know. Well, especially when you're out skateboarding in the streets. Technically, we're always trespassing. Yeah, but I, I kind of don't count that. Yeah, That's nah, like, cops dude, think you're it's just cool chasing. now. Nah, cops are like, yeah, man, you fucking You're chasing your hard, dream. Bro. You know yeah. what I mean? You hopped the fence. No, they That's look different. They look at it different now. Now it's like, oh, man, keep doing that. You know, stay out of trouble. I'm grateful you know, for that. Keep fucking up destru- destruction of property. We 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 support that, but uh, yeah. So, anyways, you got anything else to say, V? I can't think of anything right now. Um, well, if anybody needs any guidance or any help, uh, I don't want to speak for you, but you feel free to DM me or Velati here. Yeah, hit uh, us up. If you're hit going us. if you're going through something and you need help, um, if it's coming to get in sober or if it's if you're scared of something. You know, how the fuck to find housing. He would know about that. Um, feel free to hit us up because that's what it's about. And if you don't ever ask, you'll not, you're not, you're not going to get an answer. And uh, that's that's as simple as that. Have at it. Yep. Here's all our info. You know, just reach out to us and let's let's get the next thing done. Yep. You know, but V, we're going to end this. You're Dude, thank trooper. you so much for Dude, having my, me on the show. My I cat really loves appreciate you, it. man. You know, my cat knows good vibes. Yeah. You know that. Your cat is great. Yeah, I uh, adopted her from the uh, from a uh, Buddhist monk. Really? Nah, found her in a bush. But anyways, um, <laughs> I really did. She was like a little baby. Had her for like twelve years. But uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, Red Leather Podcast. Tune in. Instagram, all that shit. This is great, though, man. Yeah, I love these mics, baby, baby. Drive me crazy. Top notch. Uh, top notch shit, man.